Hi again and, and good morning. Uh, so this is from Gobernur uh, Gulagudgoris to El Calafate. Uh, El Calafate is a very famous sort of uh, uh, bridge town. So it's a bridge to get to uh, a bridge town to get to all the really cool glaciers and uh, uh, some pretty cool spots uh, in Patagonia. Uh, so this is basically going through the inland. This road was just all over the place. It was mud and dirt, uh, like a lot of tracks in the road and then it was hard and dry and then it was a lot of rock spilled throughout the road. It was a bit of a nightmare to ride to be honest. Uh, trying to keep it, uh, trying to keep it on a, um, you know, nicely in the tracks um, was quite, quite difficult, you know. Uh, Mainly because the, the surfaces, you can, as you can see, we're going to sweep through some of the surfaces now. They just varied. Some of them were really easy to ride, and then some of it was just like miles of rock just thrown onto the road as crushed rock. And it was just, you know, it was a tough, tough ride. I can't remember how many miles it was of the of the dirt, and, and uh, there was a bit of mud. And, um, but the hard stuff was easy, but the problem, this sort of stuff was pretty easy, but the problem was is that it just changed all the time. And they've got some, uh, tr uh, what do you call them, graders, the big machines that come up, and, and they take that stuff that's in the centre there, which you don't want to be riding on at all, and they just throw it out all across the road, and it just makes it, you know, it just makes the, the bike slippy and wanting to move around a fair bit, but. Not, it wasn't too difficult, but I was pretty glad when it was over because it did take a long time to ride this section. You know, I saw a car or, you know, once in a while. It's really strange because you go off this road and then you get on the tarmac and then you see quite a few cars and you think, where are they going? They ought to stop. Um, yeah, so ride through the guts of it. Um, but most of it was okay, it's just that you just can't get into a rhythm because you know, the surface just changes all the time. Um, and you know, I wouldn't want to ride it in the mud in the, when it was wet. But, and it was wet underneath in a lot of places, uh, it was soft underneath. So basically you're just always just changing track. <sighs> and the thick stuff is a pain in the ass, but anyway, you get tired after a while just being up on that in that three-quarter stance as you can see I'm leaning forward over the, you can see from the shadow I'm leaning forward over the over the bars a little bit but um, it's not really big it's, your ass is about six inches off the off the seat basically um, I've seen some other a couple of other riders that I went past at one stage so we're just standing straight upright um, you know, each to their own I suppose but um it's just about being comfortable. But you do feel, when you get on the thick stuff, you feel the bike just moving around at the back all the time. And, um, and then sometimes you, you're on a track, like I'm, you know, you're in that little groove there and then that groove changes and you've got to move across, take it, take it across the center with all the, across all the loose stuff. Uh, um, but yeah, it was a pretty, pretty desolate sort of ride. Um, until we started getting closer to El Calafate and then it sort of opened right up. But I spent two nights in Governor Gregorius. Um, yeah, all this sort of stuff. This was wet a few days earlier and that would have been really tough, you know, all this sort of area. Um, yeah, spent a couple of nights there, just, just sort of planned out how many times I was gonna, how many nights I was gonna stay in El Calafate and what I was gonna do there. Um, Basically, that's it's uh, it's the end of Ruta um, Ruta Forty ends down there. Um, sorry, I don't know what I'm talking about. Ruta Forty doesn't end down there. You basically turn off Ruta Forty um, and then get to El Calafate, and uh, and from there it's probably about a thirty to forty minute ride to get to the glaciers, and pretty cool riding, to be honest, you know. Um, and uh, it was you know, a really, really enjoyable sort of uh, in, enjoyable time down there. But I'll write about that in the next couple of days. Um, yeah. So uh, the the things that uh, I think is a, a bike or a car. It's a car. 
Um, the things that you sort of learn along the way is that uh, any time you're riding like these long stretches off-road um, is to just take your time because there's, you know, out of all, a lot of people that I met along the way, some didn't make it because they broke down, some had, you know, crashes and just injured themselves. No one seriously, um, but just come off, you know, and, and the thing is you never really want to be, you never really want to be hitting a deadline and it happened to me where I had to get places at a certain time, you know, you, you, you have to get there. Um, it happens to everybody where you've just got to do it. But at the same time, where you can avoid it, try to avoid it. Try to always leave plenty of time for the day. A good, you know, there, there's a point of A, point B rides, uh, and then there's the adventure rides, you know. And the point A to point B rides, you want to basically um, have a good solid riding day and allow yourself two to three hours to basically relax during the ride and be able to turn off and you know, get some photos and, and just relax a little bit. Um, it's a lot harder in these sort of areas because there's no real towns anywhere. It's just all road. So it does make it a little bit more difficult. But, you know, I, I had a lot of fun here and um, I I met, uh, along the way, I met uh, some people. I met a, uh, I met an Italian guy and um, and, uh, and he's a really cool, cool guy and we hung out a little bit. Um, we we didn't ride together because mainly only because uh, um, his name's Johnny. Uh, mainly only because he he was having issues with his motorbike and uh, and it, it basically you know his chain was loose and we tried to fix it and uh, and um, the, I, I met a, I met a couple. Of, I'm pretty sure it's Robert and Sabine. Um, and uh, I met their, them, uh, they're from uh, Germ Bavaria and I met them and, and they helped out um, Johnny um, with, his, uh, with his bike and the, and the loose chain and stuff like that. Um, but this is actually, this is early in the morning here, this is just leaving uh, Robinor and this, this is just on the ride. As you can see that rock on the left there, they were the worst spots where it was just covered in crushed rock and it was just really loose. Uh, that's me kissing the road at the end of the at the end of the uh, at the end of the dirt road. That's me also dropping the camera. I'm trying to get a shot. And that with that here's uh, so there's Johnny the Italian in the middle there, and Robert and uh, Sabine. We met, I met them. There's a like a big lake here, and this is getting really close to El Calafate, But he's He's, uh, um, he's, he hired that bike, Johnny, and uh, had all sorts of problems with it. The chain was really loose, and basically we, we loosened, uh, Robert, we loosened the back, Robert loosened the back of it, and basically gave it the full extension, but it was still, uh, extended it out, it was still uh, fully loose, you know. But I met, I met uh, Robert and Sabine a couple of times, and I met them as they were leaving. And then these other uh, other guys uh, rolled up. They'd also hired bikes. I didn't really get to know them, but, but Johnny, Johnny, we keep in touch. There's Johnny there. So yeah, I, he was pretty disappointed with the company that hired him that bike because he's basically stuck in. Uh, I, I met Johnny also in um, in Ushuaia, and he was stuck there waiting for waiting for a replacement bike. But you would think they would fix that out, fix that up before. That's with my 360 camera. And I've got a couple of good, good videos on the 360 coming up. And that's me saying goodbye and overtaking them and, and moving on. And um, yeah, so it was, um, yeah, so I met them. They left um, El Calafate and headed back. Um, they also hired a bike and they've been riding for years, different parts of the world. A really nice couple. Um, yeah, so the day that, that the day that I was going to the glacier, I rode past them early in the morning. So here I'm probably about 30, 40 miles out of El Calafate, and I, I actually stopped up a little bit further. There was a little sort of lake, a little little lake that opened up. It was pretty cool, but it was really windy. Uh, 
through here. Uh, the, the whole day was pretty windy and that makes it even tougher when you're riding on the dirt. Um, you know, it, 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 it makes it at times really impossible, but it, this wasn't the windiest. I, I, I got some crazy stuff further down south where in one occasion the, the wind just pushed me all the way to the other side of the road. And luckily there was no cars, so I just couldn't do anything about it. It was just so strong, you're basically leaning the bike right into the wind all the time, you know, just trying to keep the bike, not the bike upright, but just keeping it so you can actually get there. And this is another one of the little, little rivers you cross. That was the end of the road, the dirt road there. <coughs> one of the little towns we passed through, nothing much was open. Um, yeah, it's one disappointing thing about Argentina is they don't actually have the street food that all, you know, anywhere near the, the amount of street food that all the other countries have. This is just me stopping ahead and those guys going ahead again. Um, and I think this last one is just me jumping past them. Again, I th actually I think this is me taking out, taking out with Johnny. I'd stopped a couple of times. Johnny was probably sitting on about 80 or 90 kilometers an hour because his, his chain was ridiculously loose. Like, you, you, if you had have seen it, I should have taken a photo of it. It was just crazy, you know. Yeah, as I said before, you know, you're passing lots of cars and these sort of things and you, you just, uh, on the dirt road, there was just no cars. So maybe four or five in the, 100 miles or whatever I was on the on the dirt for but yeah um, I was actually I actually before I hit that dirt road I was really considering um, try, you know I went I went for a ride in Robin Hood Gregorius just on an alternate road but that was that was worse uh, only because the wind was just so strong and uh, but the wind that I, the day that I rode, it wasn't as strong as what it had been the day before, uh, cross route, down route of 40. Because that just makes it really tough. If you've got to stick in lines and, and, and if there's dirt and mud, and I'd heard different stories about the condition of that road, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Yeah. Johnny Nice on River, if you on the River app, he, he does some pretty cool riding. He's got a, at home he's got a couple of bikes, but he's got, I think he just bought a K, the new KTM 1290, and uh, he had an 1190 before, and absolutely, the 1190 is a beautiful looking bike. I think it's, the, the, the 1190 is a better looking bike than my bike, but the thing is, I just wanted that extra power, you know, <laughs> um, and I'm glad I did it. But all in all, a really cool day's riding and uh, an easy day's ride. Met some nice people. You can't you can't complain about that. All right, guys. So any any questions or comments as as ever, this is getting into El Calafate. Uh, just leave your comments, and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, guys.